All right, class. Hello and welcome to our discussion of the writing process. This is going to be the writing process that we teach here at AUM. If you go out onto the internet, you will find there are some variations to this, but more or less, it's all kind of the same thing. So let's go ahead and get started. One second. All right, I apologize if there are a bunch of starts and stops. I am trying not to catch my uh, coughing on uh, audio. Okay, so next slide. And the writing process as we teach it consists of four major parts. Pre-writing, drafting, revision, proofreading. And the subsequent slides are going to cover all these in detail, uh, so I'm not going to give you any more commentary on this one right here. We're just going to go right into pre-writing. Now pre-writing, as it says, everything you do before you actually start writing. Literally anything and everything. For us in this class, that includes activities like brainstorming. That includes activities like outlining. Uh, it is all that, you know, oh, I need to find a topic. It's getting your topic stuff together. It's annotating sources uh, if you are doing a research project or doing other research, or it's conducting interviews if you need actual live inter uh, information. It's going and gathering data or running tests or any anything you do before you sit down and write your report or write your paper. That you need to do. That's a pre-writing activity. And I heavily, heavily encourage you to spend a significant amount of time in pre-writing. The more you time you spend here, the better off you're going to be. So um, in the context of this class, brainstorming to get a bunch of information, but in particular, outlining. The stronger outline you have, likely the more successful your paper is going to be. So I've seen, um, you know, the difference between papers from where a student sort of writes just off the cuff by the seat of their pants, and one who writes with an actual solid outline, it's often night and day. So... I encourage you to spend a lot of time here. Now, that doesn't mean that you know if you outline stuff that you know, if you that you have to stick to that plan. Uh, in my experience, I make an outline, sit down, start writing. Well, you know, I already know what every paragraph is going to be about. I already know what order they're going to go in. I already know what quotes I'm going to use from what sources and where I'm going to use them. Still, things change. So an outline isn't like a solid end-all plan. Uh, we'll discuss that when we discuss outlining more specifically. But this planning phase is incredibly valuable to make sure you've got everything you need in order to write your whatever it is you're writing in this context of this class, your essays, and that that information is organized in a way where it's going to be easy for you to have it on hand so you don't have to slow down. So if we go skip forward real quickly, drafting, that's the actual act of writing. This classically, I think, is what most people think of when you tell them about writing. Basically, drafting and nothing else. The person sitting down at a typewriter, clacking away, sitting at their computer, punching away their screenplay and Microsoft Word or whatever it is they're working on. No one really thinks about the rest of the writing process. But if you spend a lot of time organizing your information and getting good information together, then you don't have to stop drafting once you actually start writing. Once you sit down to actually start getting like words out of your head and onto paper, uh, if you've got your plan next to you, you know you it's not going to be. I get to the end of this paragraph. I'm drafting. What's next? I don't know. Well, no. If you've spent time brainstorming and outlining, or doing other pre-writing activities, you already know what's next. You don't have to slow down. You can just keep drafting. Um, now, I will also note this says it's not the time to edit your work. So for me, there are uh, two major hurdles to writing. And the first one comes with thinking about what I want to write in the first place. Uh, for my own personal projects, you know, I can sort of dawdle around and take all the time that I want to on those. But for like a class where it's like, okay, I know I'm going to have a paper due. I know I'm going to have to um, have a topic. Oh gosh, what the heck am I going to write about? And so sometimes discovering that topic is very difficult. And for me, that's the first uh, big hurdle that I myself experience, but that I've seen a bunch of other students experience. The second big hurdle 
is actually getting started with the putting the words on the paper. It, you know, it's easy to spend all the time in the world planning and brainstorming. Then you know, once you get your topic, you're like, all right, I'm over that first hurdle. You get all that information together and then you open up Microsoft Word on your computer. And then there's that blank page just staring at you. It's kind of looking at you like a challenge, like how are you going to start this? Um, for me, starting that process can be actually pretty difficult. One And for a lot of students and for a lot of my colleagues, I know that's also true. Once you actually get into the flow of writing, you don't want anything to interrupt it. You want to stay in that zone as long as possible. So one, that's the benefit of pre-writing. If you've got a plan, you hit the end of a paragraph, you don't have to stop and think about what's next. You already know what's next. Just keep writing. Uh, don't stop to edit your work. The creative words are flowing out of me part of your brain is different than the all right, are all my commas in the right place uh, part of your brain. And so if you're typing along and you stop to fix and perfect and correct every sentence, you are going to slow yourself down significantly. There are the rest of the writing process is about editing your work and making it better. You'll get to that. Just get um, just get the words on the page or uh, just get the clay onto the potter's wheel or, you know, other metaphors as well. I like to call this the word vomit fa uh, phase of the writing process because you're just getting the words out of you into your text editor or onto the piece of paper and you can work with them much easier once they're out of your head. So once you're able to get into that flow, just stay in it. Have a plan going into it. That'll let you stay in it longer. Um, don't stop and edit your work. That'll let you stay in that longer. Now, uh, as we'll see in the brainstorming discussion, also, if you're not used to writing, uh, do take breaks because it might be the case that you are not used to engaging all those uh, creative muscles where it's like the actual compositional muscles. I don't, I'm not suggesting that you're not creative. Mm -hmm. Uh, even in other ways, but the, I have a thought in my head, how do I put that into words? What's the right word order can be, um, a frustrating experience to engage in if you're not particularly used to it. So if you're drafting along, you want to stay in that flow as much as possible, but at the same time, you also don't want to overtax yourself to the point where the quality of the work is becoming, uh, is starting to slip. So if you notice you're losing steam while you're writing, that's normal. That's fine. Take a break. Get up. Walk around. Go do something else for a while. Um, you don't have to try and write your entire draft in one sitting. In fact, I do not recommend that you do that. Uh, so once you've actually gotten a full draft together, we get to the... You, you're half done with the writing process as we know it. Then we get into revision. And this is the time to consider what we like to call higher order concerns. Uh, and by that, I mean focus, organization, and detail. Now, the question here is, okay, you can go back and look at your paragraphs and see if they're focused. Does every sentence in this paragraph belong in this paragraph? Can I relate it back to the topic sentence of this paragraph in some way? Well, you can also do the same thing with the focus of the essay overall. Can I relate this paragraph back to my thesis statement? If not, then I might question, does that paragraph belong in this essay? Or can I link it to another paragraph, which then links back to the thesis statement? Because sometimes when we're drafting, uh, even against our best intentions, we might end up going off on a tangent or something like that, or maybe not organize, or you know, maybe accidentally putting extra ideas into a paragraph that didn't need to be there, or adding in a paragraph uh, that wasn't originally in our outline because we thought it would be useful at that point. Maybe, and then it turns out it wasn't. Basically, do I stay on topic at the paragraph level? Do I stay on topic at the essay level? Is my writing focused? Is the essay well organized? Does the flow of information make sense? If you're telling me a story about yourself and your literacy narrative, uh, please do not go all Quentin Tarantino. Instead, Chronological order is a great way to organize a story. Is the beginning of your story at the beginning? Is the middle in the middle? Is the end at the end? Well, that's what it means uh, for an essay to be well organized at this point. 
And I say at this point because, well, how do we organize an essay when it's not a story about ourselves, when there is no chronological order? It's like, well, we'll get to that. There are organizational principles that you can use for things that are not narratives. We'll, if I'm still around in a unit two, we'll cover that then. Uh, did you go into enough detail? So are your details well developed? Are they really specific? Can Are you putting the image in your reader's head uh, that you have in your head with enough specificity to where those images, if they're not a direct match, are really close? So that's also what we want to do. And we will see this idea come up again in the readings, uh, section two and three of 10 Ways to Think About Writing. And then finally, did what you produced actually address the writing prompt or your purpose? And did what you cons uh, wrote consider your audience? So if you're writing to a more formal audience, now's the time to go polish up your language. Uh, maybe make sure you didn't actually use, accidentally use slang or something like that. Um, it's a good time to look at your draft and go take a look at the assignment sheet and make sure that you wrote what the assignment sheet asked. Ideally, this is something that would be caught in pre-writing. Like there's a lot of issues in revision that you can catch in pre-writing. If you've got a strong outline, chances are you're going to end up with a decently organized essay. It might need some changes, but it probably won't need a significant overhaul. Uh, the other thing I know in terms of writing prompt for the assignment sheet is I sometimes have students who write me beautiful essays. They're focused. They're organized. They're very detailed. They are not what I asked them to write. The most egregious example I've ever seen of this is... um. I had a student, you know, unit one, tell me a story about yourself. They turned in a, with citations, a paper on why the spread of nuclear weapons across the world is bad. And, you know, even though I agree with that, that nuclear weapons are a terrifying thing, and the more people have them, the scarier it gets. That's not them telling me a story about themselves. They didn't do the assignment at that point. So I... You know, I didn't grade it. I just kicked it back to him and said, it's not the assignment. Do it again. Uh, but do make sure that you are actually addressing your writing prompt. And again, something that would get caught in outlining. So this is a good time to do this. But if you've spent a lot of time in the pre-writing phase, you shouldn't need major concerns here unless you get into your essay and you realize there's a critical flaw somewhere. Which is not to say that that doesn't happen. Um, I've been six pages into an essay before and realized that the point I was trying to make was just wrong and had to scrap the whole thing. Or, you know, I, you get to the point where it's like, okay, I thought this section in the outline looked good and would be useful here. It turns out that it just needs to be cut. So some of the common things that I see that you might want to keep an eye out for, and we will discuss this more when we talk about paragraphs, is... Paragraphs that are not focused. Too many ideas crammed into a single paragraph. Often, this paragraph will end up taking up two pages or more. Um, sometimes I can see where the student just needed to press the enter key and make a new paragraph. Sometimes it's a giant soup of different things. Now, again, we will discuss when should I start a new paragraph, but that's one of the two major things I see is, okay, this paragraph has too much going on in it. Often that is coupled with that paragraph has a lot going on in it because the individual things in that paragraph aren't really fleshed out or sufficiently detailed. So am I going into enough detail? If the level of detail you're going into feels a bit ridiculous to you, then it's probably about where you actually need to be. Um, so those are the two for your own personal revisions that I would suggest we would uh, pay particular attention to. Not that these aren't all important, but those two jump out at me as probably the ones you want to keep an eye on more than anything else. Um, but we'll go into more of like how, how does that actually look in an essay or in a paragraph when we start looking at examples of those. But once you've done all that, once you've maybe shuffled a paragraph or two around, maybe cut or added a paragraph, proofreading. At the very end, you go through, you check your grammar, you check your spelling, are all my sentences right? Any any simple mechanical issues, grammar, stuff like that. And then you've gone through the writing process and you've produced 
a first draft. So the thing about the writing process is it's not a once through and done process. It is a cycle that you can go back through over and over again. And you don't even have to go through it completely, just whatever part you need at the time. You might discover in revision, oh geez, I keep mentioning this thing. I should probably have a paragraph or two uh, about it to describe to my reader what it is, but I don't have any of that information. Let me kick back to pre-writing, go do some research on that thing, type of the paragraph, weave it into my essay. You know, you do stuff like that, you produce a second draft or a third draft, and eventually the paper is just due. Uh, but it's not unusual for people who are producing pieces of writing to go get published to go through this process, three or four drafts on one writing project with other people looking at it and giving them feedback uh, so they know what to cut, what to add, usually what to cut, if I'm going to be honest with you, um, and that kind of stuff uh, like that. So it's not a once-through process. It is the process we will be practicing in this class, we'll do some brainstorming, or I'll have you do brainstorming online. I guess that's what this is going to be. Um, you're going to draft it up. You'll get feedback. You'll turn it in. You'll get a grade. Uh, you know, or you know, revise it after conferences and peer review, or revise it after your grade, or whatever, whatever you want to do. And that's basically it. That is the writing process um, that we teach here at AUM. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on. And that is a great way to approach any writing project. Uh, where's the... So if you are given any paper or any any writing task, not even essays here, pre-writing, drafting, revision, proofreading. If you are writing lasagna recipes for your mom blog, this process will give you the strongest mom blog lasagna recipe that you could possibly produce. It will give you the best essays, it'll give you the best whatever it is you're working on writing. Plan it out, write it up, check it for big things, check it for small things, maybe go through that a couple of times. So keep this in mind um, as you're going through not just the writing projects in this class, but in all future classes. So we're going to move on to a specific discussion of brainstorming next, and I will see you in that video.